These are their chosen representatives. Very well. Let us hear what they have to say. Yes, sir. I present to you our commander, Lord Quintus Van Kena, Legatus of the First Legion. The First? I had no idea you had survived. We lost our Emperor, our city, more than half our troops. For my wounds, I may never take the field again. But we survived, I. In a manner much to your liking, I dare say. We have no intention of adding to your misfortunes, nor do we bear you any ill will. Spare me. Though you children may speak in earnest, overtures of peace ever ring hollow in my ears. So long as man stands to profit from his neighbor's suffering, war is inevitable. Driven from our ancestral homeland into this blasted waste, yet still you yearned to rob us of our paltry scraps. It was only with Magitek that you learned to keep your distance. Though we knew it was only a matter of time before you regrouped and returned. Conquest and Empire were our only defenses. Emperors Solus and Varys understood this, and through their campaigns saw us grow and prosper. Much blood has been spilled in Garlemald's name, aye. But if it is a choice between yours and mine, then it is hardly a choice at all. I do not deny that a great many conflicts throughout history were driven by the desire or necessity to gain by another's loss. That is not why we are here. Nor have we come to petition your aid in the war with the Telophoroi, grave though that threat may be. Our purpose is simply this. We wish to help you. Let us help you. If there is aught that can be done to ease your plight, we would be glad to do it. Perhaps you would. But regardless of the ideals you espouse, your leaders would not send an army into Garlemald if they did not stand to benefit. If we accept their aid, they will expect their efforts to be rewarded once the Telophoroi are no longer a threat. But after compensation and concessions, the great empire would be brought to heel. Her enemies rejoice at her downfall. Our third eye, a mark of shame. We won't stand idly by and let your people be humiliated. And we're not alone in that. We only want to make a difference, to make this world of ours better. Surely you can understand that. What I'm trying to say is, there are so, so many people who just don't care about making you suffer. And maybe that's almost insulting after all the suffering you feel the world has subjected your people to, but... Believe it or not, that's the truth. And now we're here, and all we're asking is for you to tell us what you want, what you hope for. So much blood has been shed, so much lost, all because of this endless war. Who wouldn't want to end it? Can we not work together to face our problems as one? Answer me this, young peacemakers. If a world without conflict is your desire, 
Why reject the unity and prosperity of Garlemald? Is it because we do not share your faith? That we do not share your heritage? That our ideals and virtues differ? That we cherish and hold in the highest that which you do not? Disparity is the root of discord, and peace built on compromise is flawed and fleeting. Happiness for one and all is a dream, and the reality is that to the victor go the spoils. That is why we Garlians will never submit nor surrender. For freedom and for pride, we will remain true to ourselves until the bitter end. That is my hope. It seems there is nothing more to say on the matter. You will remain here while I decide what is to be done with you. Do not be alarmed. No harm will come to you if you cooperate. We will not resist. However, as your guests, I ask that we be allowed to speak with the other members of your group. As you wish. I had no intention of locking you up. As by dawn you would be frozen stiff and you're no good to me dead. You are free to move about the encampment. But there is one condition. Collar them. Incentive. You'll be watched at all times. Stray too far or act suspiciously, and we will administer a rather painful shock. Stop. Keep away from that one. The champion of Eorzea is not so easily cowed. Even if he allowed himself to be collared, the shock would be no more than an itch. No, if he refuses to obey, we will activate the twins' restraints instead. You needn't worry about us. We'll forget we're even wearing them soon enough. Even now, you still... Why go to such lengths? What is it all for? a curious one. A far cry from the merciless barbarian others paint you to be. You will be their warden. Take them away. 
Yes, sir. Finally escape the watchful gaze of your keepers, have we? Don't react. You'll only draw attention to yourself. Just carry on as you are and listen. After you left with the Guardian lad, Lucia bade a few of us scouts follow you at a discreet distance. We observed you being led into the station, but decided against venturing inside. When you emerged some time later, and we saw that the twins were sporting Magitek collars, it was clear what had taken place. Now, as quietly as you can, tell me everything. The Legatus himself, eh? Now there's a surprise. This is also the first I've heard of a plan to join forces with the Tenth and storm the Tower of Babel. An interesting development, and perhaps the opportunity we've been waiting for. Our comrades back at the camp also received some rather promising news, but it's still too early to get our hopes up. For now, keeping yourselves out of harm's way comes before all else. Whatever demands the Guardians make, indulge them. With luck, this will all be over soon. Until then. They had not gone far. We searched high and low, but no luck, I'm afraid. I might have guessed you'd be the only one to find anything. I wasn't expecting much to begin with. Eventually, there will be nothing left out here for us to safely salvage. For now, this will have to suffice. We should return to the station. There you are. Heard you'd gone hunting for ceruleum above ground. Brought back a king's ransom? Hardly. But thanks to these three, we have enough to last a little while longer. Well, well. It's not at all as I was expecting, these ones. But for savages, they seem positively docile. It's a poor attempt at humour. In all honesty, I'm grateful for your efforts. But even with another night of warmth, there are those among us who may not live to see the morrow. I trust your expedition was fruitful. Lord Quintus! Use what you procured to refuel the armor. But, sir, what about the heaters for the camp? The time for action is upon us. My men and I have matters to discuss. In the meantime, you are to wait here. Do not forget, you are being watched.
time for action. What did he mean by that? I can only speculate. Clearly something requiring their Magitech, given what we just heard. Whether they plan to utilize it now, or after they join with the Tenth, is another question. Will they ever escape this cold? Return to and reclaim the idyllic spaces of which Eula spoke? Finished your war, Council? Alphino and Alizea are to stay here, as our prisoners. They will be released once your comrades have relinquished their supplies and withdrawn from Garlean soil. Until our terms are met, they will be detained at a separate location. After everything we've said and done, this is how you treat us. Our allies have but limited supplies. They may stave off cold and starvation for a short while, but what then? For now, For now, keeping yourselves out of harm's way comes before all else. Whatever demands the Garleans make, indulge them. Get them out of here. This is my home. Our home. At least it was until that night. I was with Lord Quintus when the capital fell, and thus spared. My family, who did not own a radio, were less fortunate. When dawn came, I made my way here. My parents, my little brother and sister, they were still inside, but they weren't themselves, and they, they tried to, and I had to. I had promised to take them away from the capital that very morning, to somewhere safe, to hide until the fighting stopped. Garlean flag bears a chain, the bonds between our countrymen. A red link at its center, the blood of the fallen, our loved ones who lived and died for Garlemald. But if she too fell, who would be left to remember them and their sacrifice? 
What enduring proof would there be that they were ever here? If we had turned to your gods, would they have saved us? I'm sorry, forget I spoke. We should go. Believe me, I do not enjoy being here any more than you. But he wanted us to play along, so that is what we will do. Painfully so. Unbearably. I've been thinking about what Quintus said. About why no one would accept Garlian rule. Irreconcilable differences. When coexistence isn't an option, only conquest remains. Varus at Gimlet said much the same. Only by uniting the world beneath a single standard would we rid ourselves of the Asians. United, as one people, one race cleansed of imperfections. A cold and unforgiving vision. And when we fail to live up to their standards, what place is there for us in their world? But the truly sad, truly frustrating thing is how damnably similar it all is to the lofty ideals of Father and the Forum. Non-intervention. Always non-intervention. Protect our knowledge and our people and to hells with the rest of you. And yet, I can see how it happened. Varys and Father looked to their elders for guidance and took their virtues as their own. But for this world was of their making. In who else could they place their trust? All of us lost in a sea of chaos. Searching desperately for purpose and meaning. But it shouldn't just be an extension of another's. It has to be ours. It has to be. We all have a stake in this world. No one should be silenced. I won't deny that we lack the experience of people such as Father or Quintus. Perhaps they've come to see the world as a series of problems, and the most efficient way of solving them, to reduce everything to fundamental forms. A stone is a stone, a cloud a cloud, a flower, no more than that. Simple descriptions that strip the subject of distinguishing characteristics. A man is a man, divided according to race, creed, or allegiance, and to some, defined by such associations. Is that what you think? In my misbegotten youth. But what I believed wisdom was no more than aggressive ignorance. I've since learned to look beyond the banners and the politics, to see people as individuals with their own hopes and dreams. As for my dream of building a better world, well, every day I'm reminded that it is far more complex than I had ever imagined. 
but it only spurs me onward to find the wisdom and the strength to see it through to the very end. supplies and an immediate withdrawal. These are your conditions. Demands. And you forgot about the airship. Once again, you will leave one behind. It will be used to return the prisoners. Their collars will be removed prior to the exchange. So in the end, not even Father's expertly worded rhetoric could deter you from your chosen course. Huh? Not that I thought for a moment that it would. I've no love for violence, of course, but ours is a cause worth fighting for. I just wish he'd realise it too. Sometimes the only way to protect the ones you love is to take a stand. To refuse to suffer in silence. I want you to know I share your conviction. Whether it be on the battlefield or in the debating chamber, I won't back down. I guess what I'm saying is... You've found your own reason to fight. Yes. Yes, I have. God's willing, there will come a day when we can finally lay down our arms and there will be peace. But not until the Telophoroi have been defeated once and for all. And you, brother, will have a vital part to play. By your words and deeds, you'll lead the way. I pray I am up to the task. There'll always be naysayers. Those who think us fools for even trying. It's easy for learned elites to criticize earnest efforts and assert their moral superiority, all without offering alternatives. Not that their sophistry has ever wounded you. So stubborn and strong, stronger than you even know. Don't ever change, you hear me? If you stumble, I'll be there to catch you or give you a thick ear. Maybe both for good measure. Thank you, Alizé. The scouts have secured Alizé and Alfino. Their collars were removed without complication as well. They report no casualties, not for their party nor the guards who will wake from their premature slumber in due course. It would appear the situation has changed. I propose new terms. We have information that will be of great interest to Lord Quintus and I wish to speak with him in person. No. In the event you rejected our first proposal, we came prepared with a second. We, 
the loyal soldiers of the First Legion, proud servants of Garlemald, of the fallen Emperor Varys, shall safeguard these lands from the barbarian hordes until our countrymen return! Stop! Both of you! This child may be the worst emissary I have ever seen. We received an urgent communication from the Grand Company of Eorzea. Envoys from the Imperial Army, led by members of the 10th Legion, came to Alamigo and requested an audience. They explained that their efforts to coordinate the reclamation of the capital with the aid of the 4th, 5th, 8th and 12th had ended in failure. Communication between most legions has broken down entirely. Most of the 10th's conscripts have deserted, leaving their forces severely depleted. That is why, unable to continue the fight on their own, they and their allies turned to the Grand Company of Eorzea for aid. Lies. Every word. It is the truth, and I have not finished. The Tenth has requested that we deliver a message to Lord Quintus. Have the ill stand down. You have been listening, my lord. What, what are your orders? <sighs> Inform her that we will honor the tenth decision. Bereft of hope, and now dignity. I release you from your duty. All of you. I take solace, your radiance in the knowledge you are not here to witness our debasement. It was a grand, glorious dream we shared. Of a world united, of peace and prosperity. We are ghosts, you and I, memories of days gone by. Bonds forged in blood that I will not see tarnished. that Quintus will agree to a truce, we must take it. I just hope we get there before he and his men do something rash. <laughs> 